Hey there, Foxy Gamers! Welcome to part 3 of my 4-part Stardew Valley Min-Max Guide. If you haven't seen them yet, check out the first two videos which include days 1 through 14 of Spring Year 1. The link is in the description down below. This video covers days 15 through 21. All of the footage is unedited, so you can see every detail that happened. It is just sped up to 600% for time's sake. My commentary on tips and tricks are sprinkled throughout the video, but you can check the pinned comment below for important timestamps. Day 15 starts with me plotting out quality sprinklers and preparing the soil for strawberry planting. Technically, you won't have to plant and water strawberries until day 16, but I didn't want to have to spend the energy watering, so I started working on it day 15. I didn't get everything finished, but it's okay because planting on 15 won't give you an extra harvest. Salmon berries start spawning today, so make sure to hit those nearby bushes to get some free food, but don't stray too far from your path as it's not worth a lot of extra time to harvest them. My time in the mines today is just spent going over and over on floor 81 to farm as much gold ore as possible. I also spent some time on floor 41 for some iron ore and coal. I got as many quality sprinklers made as possible and headed back to the farm a little early to continue prepping for strawberries. On day 16, your number one priority should be making sure you have every single strawberry planted and watered. I also ran to Pierre's today to grab the backpack upgrade and spend my remaining gold on whatever kale I could afford. I had to eat potatoes in order to finish all of my planting and watering, but ideally you would have parsnips or chubs to eat and be able to sell the potatoes. I didn't exactly place my scarecrows in the most efficient layout, but I didn't take the time to fix it and figured I'd rather place too many scarecrows than lose crops to birds. When placing your sprinklers, if you don't have enough to cover all of your crops, prioritize placing them on the crops that are farthest away from your pond so you have less distance to run to fill up your watering can.
Day 17 consists of my returning to the mines to supplement the remaining ingredients needed for sprinklers. Nothing more to note here. By day 18, I had enough sprinklers that I didn't have to spend too much time or energy watering my remaining crops. If you're doing well, you won't have to do this at all. Once finished, head back to the mines, collecting salmon berries on the way. This will be the last day that they spawn.
On day 19, I realized I hadn't been checking my mushroom cave frequently enough. The mushrooms spawn every other day, so make sure you forage them for some free energy and money. By now you'll hopefully have enough sprinklers to cover your entire field of crops, so you can spend the rest of your time going to the mines. You can try to get all the way down to level 120 while picking up as many gems and forageables as you can for extra gold. At this point, you can pretty much do whatever you please for the rest of the season. If you have the means to do so, you can plant kale or potatoes on the 16th and replant on the 22nd, or plant on the 18th and replace them with parsnips on the 24th. If you do this though, make sure you buy parsnips on the 23rd as Pierre's will be closed on the 24th.
That's going to be it for this portion of the guide. Stay tuned for part four. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like and subscribe to the channel for future guides. If you're interested in seeing my Stardew Valley Let's Play series, check out my playlist below. Thanks so much for watching, and until next time, stay foxy.